We finally got our hands on the Nokia 9 Pure View, which is slated for a May release in the UAE at 2299 dirhams. Its packaging is consistent with Nokia's phones from the past, with its specifications highlighted at the back of the box and some branding on the sides. Lifting up the lid, you get the phone on one side and a box with its accessories on the other. The phone comes wrapped in a plastic sleeve in the midnight blue finish. The glass body of the phone feels premium in the hand, but the highlight really is the flush Penta camera setup, which is an engineering marvel. On the front is a 5.99 inch Quad HD Plus display, but we'll talk more about it in a bit. There's a separate box on the right which houses the SIM tool and some mandatory paperwork. But the bigger box on the left is where you'll find a lot of the other accessories, starting with a longer than usual USB-C to 3.5mm headphone jack dongle, as the Nokia 9 doesn't come with the headphone jack. There's a standard USB-A to USB-C charging cable, a pair of 3.5mm headphones as opposed to USB-C ones which would have been the smarter choice because again there's no headphone jack on the Nokia 9 Pureview and of course the Nokia 18 watt fast charging brick to charge the phone's 3320mAh battery. So back to the phone, this is a bold step for Nokia venturing more into the flagship territory. As I said, the Quad HD Plus panel is definitely one, but so are things like the in-screen fingerprint scanner and Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 octa-core processor on board with 6GB of RAM. The processor is older than the more current Snapdragon 855, but Nokia claims it's pushing the 845 to its full potential, which no other company has done so far. For a 2019 phone, calling the experience bezel-less is stretching it a bit, but no doubt there's plenty of pop from the phone's OLED panel and I quite like it. It supports HDR10 for rich visuals, but unfortunately there's no stereo speakers to back that experience fully. With Gorilla Glass 5 protection, the screen is plenty rugged, paired with official IP67 water and dust resistance. The highlight for the pure view though is its Zeiss Penta camera setup. The five cameras are all 12 megapixels at f1.8 apertures, two of them being RGB sensors while the other three being monochrome. I've had a try at the phone's camera experience, but it's been frustratingly slow. Switching between modes is slow and not something I'd expect from a phone at this price. While there is no problem with the phone's shutter speed, it takes a long time to process photos, especially if the depth layers have been turned on when taking a photo. And consequently, I've found the phone to constantly heat up towards the camera region. Picture samples too, on the other hand, have looked flat and don't have a pop of color that I'm used to from other phones. But I think with more testing, I'll learn more about the camera and I'll have more comparisons with this camera and other phones coming up, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. Aside from that, we've got the Android One software on board running Android 9 Pie. For me, this is a very good step that helps you get a clean experience in terms of software and it gets updates every single month from Nokia in a timely manner. I quite like the minimal experience and if you're an Android purist, you like it too. So as far as the phone goes, that's pretty much it. You'll get 128 gigabytes of storage with the phone with no micro SD card expansion, but there is support for dual SIM cards. I'm interested as to whether this phone can really compete with the high-end flagship cameras we see nowadays, but also how it fares with phones closer to its price point. That's it for now, thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos coming up on the channel. This was Vapov and I'll see you in the next one. Adios!